All right. Uh, <clears throat> so this this starts the second part of the class. So we, we we did linear algebra for the first portion of the class, and then the second portion is multivariable calculus. And you just took the test on linear algebra, and I'm, I'll warn you that the multivariable stuff is is a little harder. Okay, so. Uh, it doesn't mean the test is necessarily harder, it's just that the material is. You should expect to work a little bit harder to, to get the same level of understanding for the multivariable calculus than you did for the linear algebra. I actually enjoy teaching the calculus part a little bit better because uh, it's, it's more, uh, <clears throat> well, it's less arithmetic. I think that's probably the reason I like it. Uh, the linear algebra stuff's nice and everything, but you have to do a lot of arithmetic and that gets old. But uh, hopefully, You've uh, gotten a little sharper with your arithmetic skills having, having done that linear algebra. Okay, so calculus of several variables, it's helpful if you're kind of an expert at calculus of a single variable. <laughs> a single variable is what you did in Math 2A. So um, we'll kind of start off with some comparisons. I'll always try to take you back to Math 2A and do a relevant example there when I can, and then we'll lift you up into the, uh, the multivariable setting. So Math 2A, this is single variable. Okay, so what, what did we have? Let's, before we even get into the calculus part, let's just deal with the single variable. The calculus is going to be derivatives. But the single variable part, if I'm just talking about that, then I'm talking about a function. I have to start with that. So what's a typical function that we have in calculus? There's several and I want to, I want to uh, go back and, and just make sure that when you see this symbolism, you have a picture that goes in your mind. So this one's easy. Okay, that's the parabola, but then also uh, root x, okay, square root of x, that's this. Now, th I've talked about this one a little bit before, um, about how in economics, f functions that have uh, fractional powers, like, th like this one, uh, when I say fractional power, this is really x to the one half, so when I say functions involving fractional powers, I mean this one, but I also mean x to the one-third and x to the one-fourth and x to the one-fifth and all those, x to the two-fifths, fractional powers. This is the only one that you really have in your mind, you know, have, have a picture for. If I say what's x to the two-fifths, nothing pops into your head, right? <laughs> well, this is the general shape for fractional exponents and the reason they show up in ec economics a lot is because it models the uh, law of diminishing return. It's one of the things that can model that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so the, that's, these are standard functions from calculus. Let's have another one here. One over x. Does a picture pop into your mind when I write that symbolism on the board? It may or may not, but it's helpful if it does. Okay, so one over x looks like this. There's this part down here. See, when we're, this, this is an interesting thing that happens when you start studying calculus with the goal of learning economics. So when I study this in calculus, this, it's the, this whole function. There's the positive part and the negative part. But in economics, you usually ignore the negative part because if you're talking about uh, amount of goods or amount of utility or something, it's always a positive number. So you usually end up in this quadrant when you're uh, talking about economics, but when you talk about math, you get the whole graph. So there's a little bit of that going on where we have the math versus the economics and I'll, I'll try to um, make those connections whenever I can. Uh, another one here, so we'll get away from these f of x's, I could write um, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So I've already talked about that a little bit. That's a circle, that's the unit circle. When you're in calculus, that's the unit circle. Uh, and, and actually you could write it out, if you solve for y, y is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus x squared. So if I wanted to write it as a function, like the way I did those, I would have the top half of the circle is the positive square root and the bottom half is the negative square root.
now we'll make the leap to Math 4. Math 4 is multivariable calculus, so if we had single variable calculus, here's our, here's our variable x. In all those cases here, I have y equals something with x. So if I have, if, if x is the variable and now I have multivariable calculus, then I'm going to have different kinds of functions. I need to have several variables, at least two, right? If, if it was only one, then I'd be in that case. So we have to have something like f of x and y. So now I have two variables, x and y. So let's look at some of these guys. What would be the uh, analogous function here? It would be uh, x squared plus y squared. So if it was just one variable, it's just x squared or y squared. So you know what that looks like. Now all of a sudden we've got two variables. So how do you even start to graph this or get a picture? So I want you to have a few functions that you can look at the symbolism and have the, the image pop into your head in the same way that you can do that there. I have to do that for you to, to get you started. So first of all, when I graph over here, I've got my variable x and then the output is the, the second dimension, uh, the f of x dimension. Here I've got really three dimensions. I've got x and y. Those are the inputs. And then, so let, let's graph a couple points here. If I have uh, x, y, and f, so let's put in, let's say, 0 for x and 1 for y. How would I indicate that here? I go, I go out this way, 0 unit, so I stay there. Then I go out 1 unit for y. So that's the point 0, 1, and then I plug it into the function, I would get 0 plus 1 is 1. So the function is 1 there, and I get that dot sitting, floating in space. Now I could graph another point, like 1, 1. If x is 1 and y is 1, that corresponds to, there's y is 1 and here's x is 1. So now I'm going to go out there's 1, 1 in the, in the floor there. That represents x is 1 and y is 1. Now I plug that in and I get 2 for the function. So now I have to go up 2 and plot that point. Well, right away you should be realizing with me here that this is very tedious and it's, it's just not going to work. Even if I sat there and did 50 of those, I might not have any idea what the thing looks like. Whereas if I did 50 points here, I'd start to get a feel for the curve and I could really sketch it out. So what this is, let's, I can just tell you what this is rather than sitting there plotting the points, but that's how you would do it if you just want to get individual points. The real graph here is, well, it's, it's that parabola. You see it's got to be similar, right? If it was just x squared, it'd be the parabola. But now I add the y squared, and the question is, what does, it, what does that do, adding the extra variable? And the answer is you get what's called a paraboloid. So we went from parabola to paraboloid. Another, if I do this one here, the analogous equation would be that one. See, if I just have x squared plus y squared equals 1, then that's the circle that I have up there. So now if I add a variable here, I could solve for z. z will be square root of plus or minus 1 minus x squared minus y squared. See, I just solve for it by bringing these over to the other side and then take the square root. So now I have the analogous situation here as compared to this one, but, but what's going on here is we now, instead of having a two-dimensional circle, we have a three-dimensional sphere. And the top half of this, this is z equals the positive version. And then the bottom half is z equals the minus version. So you should start getting nervous, right, because it's it's much more complicated. When you just go from one variable just to two, it gets really complicated. 
because you can't really just plot points and figure out what the graphs are. Luckily in this day and age we have all this technology. We have Wolfram Alpha. You can just go to Wolfram Alpha and just start typing these things in and it'll plot them for you. So that's fine. Go ahead and do that. But please don't bring your electronic devices to the final exam. But for studying at home and learning about it, that's fine. Let's just take this one here and modify it slightly and just to show you how wild things can get. If I take f of x y equals x squared minus y squared. So just taking that simple function and just putting a minus in the middle instead of a plus. If, if I did just a minus in this situation, it would just flip the graph. So it would be really similar. They would essentially be the same graph but uh, with a minus. This one's very different. This is, uh, I have to draw it now. <clears throat> I'll, I'll put color in here so you can see it in a second. <clears throat> so this is a, that's a saddle. I'm going to do that in yellow so you can see what the graph is versus the axes. <clears throat> Now that's what's called a saddle, like Saddleback Mountain. Right, we have Saddleback Mountain. You can look out there and see it. Um, so that's called a saddle. They have names. So we have paraboloid, sphere. Probably don't need to put that on there. So those are your first graphs in two variables just to get, get a feel for it. Now we're going to want to do calculus. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time graphing stuff because it's complicated, but I just want to show you a few functions, see what we're dealing with here. <clears throat> and also scare you a little bit into realizing you're going to have to um, put a little bit of time into this. Okay, now what do we do when it comes to calculus? So let's go back to Math 2A again. And what was the um, <clears throat> what was one of the key issues in Math 2A? In single variable, so for the video, anybody who's watching the video, when I say Math 2A, I'm talking about single, vari calcu single variable calculus here at UC Irvine. <clears throat> okay, well, here's a, here's a picture that was common in this class. We have a function, f of x, and then we have a, a, a single point here, say x naught or just x. We go up here, there's the function value, f of x naught. And then what was the issue? The issue was what's the slope of the tangent line? Because that told you what the function was doing. If the slope was positive, the function's increasing. If the slope was negative, then if we had the slope was zero, then that might have been a special point where we might have a minimum or a maximum. So the big issue here was what is the slope of the tangent line. Okay, well, we're going to have more variables. So one thing that you can do here, just to kind of get your brain ready for studying more variables, is what, what does the picture do? How do we change from this picture to a picture when you have two variables? So one way to think of it is um, just think of each variable as adding a dimension. So here I had two dimensions. I have the single variable plus the function. Then over here I have two variables plus the function. So I've really just added a dimension. If I add a variable, I add a dimension. So what, what I'd like for you guys to do with your brain here is just grab this picture and pull it out from the wall. That's what gives you the extra dimension. So it's really this two-dimensional one, but then if I pull it out from the wall, that gives me the extra dimension. So just See what you see in your head. <laughs> okay. I would erase that. Let's keep going. <clears throat> all right. Okay, so did you guys all pull that out from, your, from the wall there? So the picture that you may or may not get if I, if I pull it out from the wall, then the, the line, when you pull that out, that's like getting a piece of paper. 
right? It, if it was a line and then you pulled it out from the wall, it would give you a plane. So I'm going to draw that. Uh, and the axis, I need to pull out an extra dimension. That's this one here. So now I have x and y. Okay, the function isn't just going to be a string now. It's now going to be, it, so a, a generic function in two, two dimensions or one variable is like a, a, like a string. So if I add a dimension, it's like taking the string and pulling it out from the wall. And then what you get is, it's like a, two people uh, shaking a sheet. You get a floating sheet or a floating napkin or something, whatever you want to think of. So that's something like that. Okay, something floating in air, but I don't want to think of it as flat or anything. I want to give it some kind of curvature to it. So then you can put a dotted there or something like that. <clears throat> okay, so there's my general function. And over here I took a single point and then I went up and checked the function value. So here I'll do that too, but it's more complicated. My single point is x not y not. I've got two variables to consider. That puts me at a single point down here in the plane or on the floor. And then I go and I see what the function is at that point. That's f of x not y not. Just like I have f of x not over there. I go and I check that value. And then what's the equivalent of the tangent line? Well, it's going to be a tangent plane. We need to get to where we're doing calculus that's appropriate for economics. And so we kind of skip over this idea of tangent plane. We want to start, because what's appropriate for economics? We want to know about maxes and mins, right? That's, that's what the, that's optimization. That's what's appropriate for economic models. So in this particular class, we, we kind of skip this concept, but the idea is still there. If I take a line and that's tangent and I pull it out from the wall, I get a plane that's tangent at a single point. Up here, the slope of the tangent line is what? It's f prime at x naught. That's the notation we use. That's the derivative at that point that gives you the slope of the tangent line. So what are we going to do here? Here I have a tangent plane and I have two variables. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have two uh, derivatives. So let's go to another picture for that. <clears throat> In single variable calculus you have one derivative because there's only one variable, one slope. When you have two variables, you have two derivatives. Okay, so there's my generic function. I go to a single point here. And what we're going to do is, because it's complicated, you can, you can go along in any direction along this, um, along this floating sheet. We're going to restrict ourselves to basically doing that math 2a problem in both directions, both directions of the variable. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to get a derivative, a slope of the tangent line in the x direction. I'm going to get a slope of the tangent line in the y direction. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> so let me just write out a few things here. So if I have two variables, then that implies I have two slopes. So we're going to need notation for this because over here I have f prime of x. That was satisfactory. That, that was everything we needed for derivative. But now if I'm doing the derivative with respect to x, then I need notation for that. And derivative with respect to y, I need notation for that as well. But first of all, what are we really doing? We're finding, so this curve here, this, this sheet has, if I just walk in the x direction here, and I just focus walking along in the x direction, then it's got a little slope there. And I'm detecting the slope in the x direction. So I've got the slope in the x direction. And then I've also got the slope in the y direction. 
And these slopes are going to be the same kind of a slope that you found in Math 2A. It's just it's more complicated. Let me get a little. Uh, so it's even though I draw this little arrow here, there's a little curve and I'm just finding the little tangent along there. Right now we're just at the stage where we're just getting the concept down. We're going to obviously have to learn how to calculate these things in the same way that you learned how to calculate them in Math 2A. Okay, so uh, let's have some notation here. F sub x, this, this is going to replace the F prime. It's just that the, the little sub x replaces the prime and it tells me I want the derivative with respect to x. And then I, I can't play favorites. There's n n neither of the variables is more important than the other. So whatever I do for x, I've got to have the same thing for y. So that will be the derivative with respect to y. How do you take these derivatives? So what, what, what's happening is you're checking the slope in the x direction. So if I'm, if I'm only looking at the x direction, then that means that y is being held fixed. When I look up here, it's hard to see this, but when I look along this little curve right here, you can picture that y is being fixed along that, that plane there and I'm just checking the slope along that curve. So I'm going to write that out now in words. So when I'm going to compute f sub x, the derivative of x, the derivative of f with respect to x, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold y constant. And take the derivative. And whatever I do for x, I'm going to do the same thing for y. So when I do f sub y, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to hold x constant and take the derivative. I'll add here with respect to x, that's wrt, that's this with respect to. It saves time by writing wrt instead. And this one is with respect to y. Okay, so now we have to have some examples, otherwise we're just kind of spinning our wheels here. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back to Math 2A and see how we actually took derivatives. If I had f of x is equal to x to the n, Okay, we have a formula for this. How do, you, how do you take the derivative? You take whatever power you have here, no matter what it is, multiply in front by it, and then subtract one. So in math 2a, f prime of x was nx to the n minus 1. In math 4, the math 4 equivalent of this is, okay, now I have two variables. So I have a function of x and y. And let's put together this kind of a thing here. Let's say I have x to the m, y to the n. So I, each of the x's and y's have their own power. That's why I'm spe not specifying that they're the same. <clears throat> Let, let's just switch these just so that they're the same as that. Okay, so now let's go calculate these partial derivatives for a first partial derivative. I'll just get the formula for it. Okay, so f sub x, this is going to be, what does it say to do over there? It says treat the, hold the y constant. Okay, so you can just ignore it. Just pretend like it's a 2. Okay, it's just, it's just a constant. So what do you do when you have a constant in a derivative? You just ignore it. You bring it along for the ride and you take the derivative of this part, right? So when I'm doing the derivative with respect to x, I'm holding this constant and I take the derivative with respect to x. So that'll be n 
x to the n minus 1, same as it would be in single variable, but I get the little extra goodie, y to the m. It, it comes along for the ride because it's like a constant. So you can write that out as n x to the n minus 1 y to the m. That didn't change much. Okay, now let's do f sub y. f sub y will be the derivative with respect to y, and that means I'm going to pretend like the x part is a constant. So it's just coming along for the ride, and I take the derivative of y to the m. So that part, the x to the n comes along with me because it's being thought of as a constant here. And then the derivative of y to the m is m y to the m minus 1. So I just did all of them, all of these, these types in the universe, but actually these are the ones that show up all the time in <laughs> economics. So that's why we're focusing on them. Okay, now I have to show this picture again. Now this isn't a class on taking derivatives in uh, multivariable functions, taking derivatives of multi multivariable functions. It's a class that involves it, so you've got to know how to do it, but if it were a real class on that, then we'd spend a long time and we'd be doing things like product rule and quotient rule. We'd be doing logarithms, e to the x, sine functions, cosine functions, tangents, all that stuff. So since we're, this is not really a class on, on partial derivatives, that's what these are, we, we're, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. I just want to get the ones that we need for this class so that we can start studying how we use these derivatives to answer uh, relevant questions like what's the max and the min and uh, other calculus questions, optimization type questions. Okay, so let's just have a few examples here just to practice on. <clears throat> So f of xy is 2xy. Okay, so there's two derivatives to take, f sub x. f sub x is, all right, now I'm thinking x is the thing I'm taking the derivative of. And everything else is just considered a constant. So when I, if you want, you can write this as, uh, just for the time being, uh, you can isolate the x. It's like 2y times x. And so this is just a constant. What's the derivative of the x? It's just 1, right? 1 times x to the minus, or x to the 0. So the derivative here is just 2y. I just think of these two things as a constant. And then I take the derivative of x, which is 1, and then apply the 2y to that. Okay, same thing with fy. I now think of the 2x as a constant. So I just bring that along with me. What's the derivative of y? It's 1. Then I attach the 2x. Okay, so a nice simple example to start with. <clears throat> okay, what if they aren't attached? What if the x's and y's aren't attached to each other like that? I still go through the same process, but it's actually a little bit easier. Okay, here, f sub x, this is the derivative with respect to x. Well, I'm supposed to think of y as a constant now. Okay, so now when I take the derivative here, there is no y attached to the x. I just take the derivative of that with respect to x. I get 2x. But now this is thought of as a constant, so what's the derivative of a constant? No. Z zero. Zero. So the derivative of 4 is 0, right? Okay, so if the, I'm thinking of this as a constant, I have to think of that as 0. The derivative of, of y when I'm thinking of it as a constant is 0. Luckily, we get to do it again on the other side just to practice it. So f sub y, now I'm thinking of x as the constant. So when I take the derivative of this part, it's 0. And then the derivative of y, I'm, I am taking the derivative with respect to y, so I have to differentiate that normally. So that's just 2y. You don't have to write out the 0. I'm just putting that in for the first few that we're doing. So you get used to it.
Okay, so x over y. Now that's a disguised version of this right here, this x to the n, y to the m. I could, I could have just written it like this, x, y to the negative 1. But that's not how we write these things. And so if, you, if it helps you to write it out the way in terms of just the powers, then do that. Okay, so now let's do f sub x. When I do f sub x, I'm taking the derivative of x, which is 1, and the y part just comes along for the right because it's considered a constant in this case. So that'll be just uh, y to the negative 1, which is 1 over y. That's the derivative with respect to x. The language that you use, and I'll get into this more, I just wanted to do a few examples. Uh, these are called partial derivatives, and in economics they'll call, they're called uh, marginal products. So if you heard those term marginal products, that's what these are. Okay, f sub y, let's just do this one. I'll do one more example and then you guys will be free. Your sentence will be over. Uh, okay, so uh, f sub y, I'm now thinking of x as the constant. Okay, so just we're going to bring it with us, but let's just focus on the y for a second. The derivative here, I have to multiply in front by the negative 1 and subtract 1. So I get negative, let's say x comes along for the ride, and then I get negative 1, let's write it this way, negative y to the negative 2. I need to multiply in front by the, by the negative 1, that gives me this negative, and then subtract 1, that gives me the negative 2. So I can write this as negative x over y squared. So you see that the, the derivatives are very, can be very different. They don't have to be um, exactly the sa similar. It's like here I got 2y and 2x, and here I got 2x and 2y. Right? The, you're starting to think, well, wait, maybe they're always going to look the same. They don't always look the same. You have to be careful when they start to get more complicated. <clears throat> One more. Get that square root going. Okay, so that's a typical, you could call that, a, that's like a utility function. Think of x and y as different goods. Uh, I've got the square root, so I've incorporated the law of diminishing returns. And so, if I want to take the derivatives, all right, well, let, maybe it helps to write it like this. This is x to the one-half, y to the one-half. If it helps you, do that. Do whatever it takes to put it in a, in a um, uh, situation you can recognize. All right, so when I do f sub x, that means I'm thinking of y as a constant. I'm just going to bring that along with me. When I do the derivative of x, I get 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So that's equal to root y over 2 root x. And you can, th if, if you're good at your derivatives, you're not rusty, you know, the derivative of root x is 1 over 2 root x. And then you carry along the root y with you. And this one is symmetric. Okay, uh, f sub y, now I'm thinking of the x as a constant. So bring that along for the ride and then differentiate that. That's one half y to the negative one half. And so I get root x over two root y. Okay, that's enough of a little introduction and you can practice that a little bit with the TA in, uh, in discussion. And I'll do that on Monday. Yes? How come in that example, with um, the constants that give zero, you can differentiate them, but in that example, then things go on for the right. Yeah, okay, so if I go back to the original calculus, if I just had two here, uh -huh. then the derivative is zero. But if I have 2x, mm -hmm. now it's attached. So now the derivative comes along, the, the constant comes along with me. That's the difference.